It's a day. So at 435, let's call the meeting to order. Um, and let's see, do you want a roll call or? I've got it, but thank got you. Got it, fantastic. <laughs> All right, so uh, we do have Sheila here, but I don't see any other public invited to be heard. So unless you have something to add, Sheila? I don't. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all right, so uh, we have the revised minutes that Joanne provided, um, indicating that our meeting was in person last month. Uh, does anyone have any changes or corrections, or is there a motion to approve the minutes? Great, thank you, Linda. And a second. Thank you, Kelly. All right, all in favor? That's unanimous. Great. Moving right along. <laughs> Check. <laughs> All right, so we get over to Eric for sessions. All right, uh, we have another uh, big slate of sessions this month. So diving right in, we start with some vintage technology, a Palm Pilot EA <laughs> uh, with a charging cradle, uh, as well as this large Mentor robotic arm Palm Pilot. Uh, used by a Longmont firefighter, the robotic arm from the St. Grant School District. Next up, we have a bracelet uh, that honors a Longmont uh, service member, Captain James Ham. He was missing in action in 1968, was ultimately declared killed in action in 1974. But these bracelets, they were made uh, all across the for, uh, for service members all across the country who are missing in action. And uh, this one is worn by an active duty member of the armed forces, so uh, has a lot of meaning. Um, that wasn't just something picked up in a shop. Like that. Uh, I'm sorry, Eric, was the service member who, who donated it, was he uh, here from, in Loma? He um, did not grow up here. Uh, he was actually in, in Washington State but um, lives in this area now. Okay. Um, next up, we have a collection of things related to both youth baseball and the FAA. Um, we have uh, photos from the FAA Jets baseball team as well as a uh, FAA Jets uh, shirt. And then a number of photographs from the FAA facility um, and also a long sleeve or a short sleeve baseball shirt from the North Johnson Corner Giants. Um, interestingly enough, the donor of this, his father, was actually on the museum board in the 1970s, Blue Lomba. Next up, we have a small collection of items from. Uh, Two local families, Coffin and Biederman. Um, there's a souvenir tray of pumpkin pie days. Um, it's a little hard to see in the photo, but this is a clothing stud uh, from the Grand Army of the Republic, which was Union veterans of the Civil War. This little is probably some kind of a piece of jewelry or part of a necklace. Um, is inscribed MDC, probably Merton D. Coffin. Um, and then this is a little, probably like a, a toilet kit with a uh, um, butt nail file to pick um, a spoon. Um, those came from a local house, and, and both families have a lot of connections to this here. Next up, uh, we have. Uh, objects from Chino, Japan, uh, Longmont's sister city. Um, so in the 1990s, uh, the museum director at that time uh, had actually family in Japan. So he uh, visited uh, Japan and Longmont's sister city a couple of times. And part of the culture of Japan is there's always a lot of gift giving. And so every time he would go, he would get more gifts. Uh, so these are all items that were given to him in Chino. Some of them really relate, uh, 
have some specific Chino symbolism. So, and these are a little hard to see. Um, oh, sorry, you can't see my cursor. Um, so down in the lower corner, um, there's two triangular items. Those are bookmarks with the symbol of the Venus of Jamon, which is uh, um, a fertility figure that was dug up near Chino, one of the oldest pieces of, of pottery found in, uh, in Japan. And then the uh, green item, kind of a round item, that's actually the uh, Chino City Yatsubetake uh, Museum, uh, which is um, the museum that uh, the Longmont Museum did an exchange with in 1997-1998. Uh, the other items are just kind of general uh, relating to Japanese culture. So, uh, I thought they were all uh, significant to that. Next up we have two chafing dishes that were found in the basement of the Callahan house. Uh, made probably from silver plate. Um, Callahan House has been an event space really since the 1930s when it's given to the city. So these document that period of its history. Uh, then we have uh, a number of maps that were basically retrieved from the Emergency Operations Center uh, uh, that the city operated during the 2013 flood. Um, so many of them have annotations and you know notes, uh, you know what buildings are safe, what areas um, where roadblocks have been added. So they really do help tell the story of that 2013 flood. Next up, we have one of the last photos taken of the uh, old Burlington School. So um, in 1869. Um, there was a community called Burlington, a little bit south of uh, downtown Longmont. Um, they built a new schoolhouse, you know, probably the biggest building in town. Um, that building ultimately was moved out to the Leroy Ryder farm and uh, was torn down um, in the 1990s to make way for a subdivision. So uh, this is a photograph of what it looked like just shortly before it was torn down. And we have another photo from the early 20th century, and there were two doors that you can just see kind of the shades of on the end uh, facing us here. And then interesting enough, that gap in the boards, um, originally where that gap was, it said Burlington School. So that's uh, kind of cool to pass that. Uh, Next up, we have uh, the first item from our top 10 most wanted list that we've acquired. So we're, we're still kind of putting this together. It's part of our collections plan, um, but uh, something we've had a group uh, discussing the museum's collections plan, which I uh, showed to you all uh, some months back, talking about um, Kind of guiding what the museum would like to collect. So we put together a top 10 list. One of the things on it was a tortilla roller. Um, and the item up at the top, uh, which just sort of looks like a piece of you know wooden rod, was in fact used by uh, the woman in the photo to make tortillas for many years. So uh, kind of a, a nice item. It was actually donated by a member of our uh, collections plan review group. And last but not least, we have a framed sign, uh, gold lettering on glass, that says C.W. Pace uh, was found in his former home. Uh, he was a prominent farmer, um, died in 1959, the age of 93. He was one of the founders of the Great Western Stock Show and also helped to found the Boulder County Fair. So it seems appropriate to have that. Any uh, questions on any of those items? Question, yes. I can see questions. Um, the Callahan House objects, uh -huh. they seem to have all of their own stuff. How much does the museum house and how much do they have themselves? And one thing's back and forth. 
that? Um, so what they have are kind of things that are things that they still use. And this, when when uh, facilities brought these in, I took the Callahan house and said, you know, if these are things you would want or would want to display, then we would accession them. Uh, because the Callahan House is in a separate uh, division of the city, um, we work with them a lot, but we don't really trade objects back and forth. Um, so they do have a lot of their own material. But these were things they said they, they didn't really have any interest in, in uh, having. So uh, I think they were appropriate to put in. What else is on your top end list? Um, so some of the other things are a uh, comal, which is what you would cook uh, the tortillas on, a, um, uh, a red dale uh, camper, that's the largest thing on the list, so red dale coach was a uh, uh, local company that made travel trailers and campers, um, love to have one of those. Um, a photograph that's actually of old Burlington, we have a few photos of buildings after they'd been moved or many years later, but nothing from Old Burlington itself. Um, and let's see, um, objects from some of the iconic Longmont businesses like Trailer Hardware uh, and um, Lutz Drug, things like that. Um, and I'm Blanking on the rest, but that's and it's still very much kind of a uh, evolving list. Um, so it's one of the things we'll, we will uh, hopefully bring back to you the, the collections plan for adoption, and uh, we'll, we can have a discussion about kind of what we've got on the list now and see if there's there's things you think uh, should be included or swapped out. Any other questions? Does someone want to make a motion to accept or not any or all of the accessions proposed? Tom? Okay. Is that a motion to accept all? Oh, I all? do believe that we accept all the items in the Eric's present. Okay. And is there a second? I'll second. All in favor? That's unanimous. Fantastic. All right. Thank you, Eric. You're welcome. Thank you all. All right. Uh, reports. Jim, take it away. Sure, I'll take it away. Um, I'm usual. I'm not going to go through all of it, but feel free to ask questions if there's anything that pops up at you. Um, City Council last or uh, last week they uh, adopted the proposed budget, um, and so we did not the museum. Our additional um, staff for gallery attendance. Um, thank you all for letting us stay on the staff here because we're going to organize the Washington exhibition and the music process to make this a priority. So we were happy to see that we have this included in the budget. Um, also, have some, uh, have some other exhibitions that are really just. Um, But in order to that continued business as usual. So annual subscription to our online databases, the database that currently is uh, a prep past perfect is the database that we use for both collections and some other files like the original collections. And it that's much more. So we have to replace that. And Eric's got a database that he is um, working on for the collection piece of the puzzle. And then Dumont is the basis that we're used for admissions and then so that was included. Um, then we also have additional money for our pay splits, which is um, the way that we are able to pay off our partners in order to take those. The ballet is the last year. We collect the money for the ticket sales and then at the end of the year that we pay that out. But it has to be the way for the money that we receive, but um, it has to be in our budget previously. In order for us to be able to pay out that money. So that was increased because, in fact, we received a lot more of those kinds of arrangements lately. And so we got an additional $5,000 in our bond credit. 
And then we also have, I think, um, maybe built up the mobile app that we have. And so we will be able to get them to um, continue the app and then uh, some, some classes available for how to help you to develop the content for the app. So right now we've got a Latino facility walking tour, a downtown walking tour, and a business history tour on the app. And we're working on uh, art local places tour and then also a tour that we are very in the middle of the month in collaboration with the Native Museum Guide. So we'll end up having a class here. So that's great. Uh, and then in addition to that, there's also a three quarter time art local places assistant, um, Angela Sophia Hondarnas. This sort of snapshot of all the things that we um, uh, uh, need to happen in. Um, the project management of the local farm collection. And so um, she really does need very much on all of that. So uh, she can have that in four times. So she'll be able to hire us to be able to be our team. All that good stuff. We're also continuing to work with um, essential architects um, on our master development plan. And so really what we're not doing the second phase of work with them is um, they're going to do the design work for basically the entire project. But we're going to phase that out so that we're able to complete uh, phases of the, of the expansion as they are planned. So the first portion of that is going to be what Eric has just recently um, vacated a textile storage. So we'll run the gas space so that there's um, office space and then a little bit of um, processing space for artifacts. And then we'll move on to the courtyard and some additional gallery spaces. And so that's going to be covered by the uh, Stuart Family Foundation, who's already given us a lot of the information for that. I would expect them to get another board going for the gallery piece of the council to buy. And then Megan has just written a program for a million dollar um, donation, and then we also have to work on that donation as well. So parts of that are being funded, and we're hoping to then launch a capital campaign. Some sort of, 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 at some point to be able to really get it all, you know, a lot of energy out there. So look forward to that process this morning. You guys have seen our Day of the Dead exhibit, and some of you guys I know were at downtown um, for the big celebration, so thank you for coming to that. Um, this was completed on October 7th, and you got to see the um, Marcelo Fernandez. Um, Big altar that he has out there that's really very cool. My um, altar is out there. And <laughs> that's there's great. Did you see it? <laughs> <laughs> you can turn them all out. Oh, that's so awesome. awesome. amazing. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. No, when we came out here for a field trip, we were here last week and uh, I took my class to go. Oh, that's right. So, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. Oh, that's cool. I think he was the first school tour too, so that's, that's it was it was a really good, good experience for us. And then we had it with the work at the Innovation Center and currently we're doing urban rural suburban communities and um, in our social cities content we're doing um, regions. So it's really we will kind of tie in what we did at the um, TV County House. Um, then we had a school show you know little uh, dose uh, they presented with the uh, buffalo. Yeah. Do the kids love that? They did. They, they did. did. So I had five newcomers who don't speak English. Uh -huh. So I had to translate. So that was the only thing. It was, you know, they, they kept on going. I was like, all right, you got to translate. Slow down, right? Slow down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and some of the work, you know, they were talking about the CU and uh -huh. uh, you know, the intestines, and I was like, okay, wait, I got to go. All right. All right. <laughs> It's all those work I don't use. <laughs> but uh, it was a good experience. <laughs> that's the like, Yeah, the kids love that. That crazy. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that was the one. Yeah. All right. Um, so then there's some uh, some data there that um, we had as part of the debate call that for the design process, which is that a annual spring. Institute of Museum Library Services grant that helped fund that exhibition. And in that grant, we also included um, some uh, exhibition evaluation 
And so we had a professional um, go in to make a permanent increase in the valuation for it. So we get to see some interesting data there. Um, 84% of the audience found the exhibition interesting. 5% found it childish, which was, that was one of the things that Jared the instigator was nervous about, that he didn't want, he wanted there to be a balance between being kid friendly and being um, interesting for adults. And so I think the data really suggests that he had been lost with that. So that was really good to, to have that reinforcement that we, we did the right job there. 94% felt the number of questions posed in the relationship was enough. 90% felt that there was the right amount of explanation to the label. 92% felt that it was just not the right way to interact with. And 81% felt that it was useful for children. The average adult family was um, 23 minutes, and as you might expect, groups with um, children stayed longer. So, hard data really does suggest that. Um, this exhibition is kind of, it hits a sweet spot in, in so many different ways in terms of trying to balance that kid and family and adult um, uh, interest levels. And so um, it, it actually, I think, is a really good exhibition for us to be able to uh, collect the data on because then we can kind of take these lessons forward to understand how we can, I mean, we'll never replicate this exactly, but. Certainly, in terms of the, the way that we approach it, the sort of distribution of activities and that sort of thing, we can learn more lessons from it because it is, it, a lot of people were really resonating with it. So, that's good to have. Um, I did not include this in the report, but it reminds me because this just happened officially recently. Um, the, um, Courtney, who was here with us at our last meeting, considered the um, data presentation on the summer class. She was with us as a VISTA volunteer, and we now have hired her as a full time current employee as um, an evaluation and volunteer coordinator. So that's a fantastic um, uh, move forward for us because she is going to be able to really take a lot of this. Um, tools and data collection and really move it forward. Um, Eric's been doing this uh, for years, kind of in his spare time. We've never had anybody that could dedicate to do this kind of work. And so it's going to be a real um, boost for us to be able to know what we did well, what we need to improve on, how are people perceiving what we're doing on and on and on. And so um, I think that, that the tools that Lori was able to provide for us We'll be able to apply those to exhibitions going forward and create them to compare exhibition over exhibition and how they do. So that's a, a we're all so, so incredibly pleased about that outcome. And as you can tell from Courtney's presentation, she was like the perfect person for the job. Yeah. So we're, <laughs> we're, we're, yeah. we're just super pleased about that too. Yeah. We really enjoyed having her on staff as we her time as a VISTA volunteer was coming to an end, so we were all like, ah, I can't do this, I can't do this, so it's good. Um, just to include a lot of data here on the different programs that we have to offer in, during this cycle, um, we really had a great fall, um, we, you know, the start of the fall season with um, the site-specific performance um, from people buyers. Um, they are super dynamic um, and really inspirational groups. It's nice to have them in the process of what's going on to work with them. Um, we have a fifth installment of the Faces of Change program. So this is a, a program that we um, collaborate with, with um, the um, Multicultural Action um, Committee. And so this particular one was um, about the rise of hate crimes in the country. And so, I was not there, and I am really remiss that I missed it because, by all accounts, it was one of the best data programs we ever had. Um, primary Primary Lewis um, moderated it, and there were um, uh, directors from out Boulder, the Boulder KCC, the Jewish Community um, Center, and the Boulder NACC, the Catholic NACC. And I think that they really, really unpack a lot of important issues and, and um, challenges. Um, that we've been seeing over the last several years. So that I think we all were 
very pleased with the way that we just create this environment where we can have these challenging conversations. So that was a, another another really um, successful thing. We also have a continuation of our yet in conference seasons. Um, we've launched the first climate action incentive program that we'll be implementing continuing, and that's with a uh, partnership with sustainable resilience on that. And also the city sustainable community. Um, I really got to be shorts at the local international building festival. That was so about 150 people came to that. The Symphony of State Ballet was here for two performances um, and it was very great with the dance crowds. Um, and then Sat Center Hill is not just with um, uh, Jamie Stone, who is now become um, sort of a residence museum. Um, and he's going to, I think, uh, he did the, if you remember the um, cultural fair at the Hotel. Hall. And so I think we're going to be doing more of the kind of space that sort of um, a good uh, community organization that they go to. And so we'll be doing some work with that as well. So then you see um, September by the numbers. Um, it's nice to see this way that uh, kind of pulled together. Total number of events attendees, the total number of community partners in the pattern, total attendance is over 1,500, and then the resourceful breadth of the ways. Um, year to date, 45,000, and that's how many percent of the whole. And ticket sales year to date are over 65,000, and that almost reaches our total goal for the whole year. So, really, quite a lot of in terms of the auditorium and marketing program. And then you get a list of all the um, October um, big sales that we had set. Um, and then in education, we've got Discovery Days is doing really, really well. So we've got these big movements um, that we've uh, got uh, as part of the offerings and in addition to the regular art ones. Um, so we've got a new um, contractor who's helping us out with that. Um, and then she did, and she said that to be a key player, um, which is really nice to hear the music coming out, which kids have too much fun. Um, we've got our Thursday night new program, and we do talk to you guys a little bit about that. This is um, a new free program on Thursday nights for four to five thirty. This is something that um, Courtney developed, and it really, as her role as a business officer, she really likes getting out into the community and doing outreach. And over and over and over again, she heard that the students don't have anything to do at all. And so this is um, a way to sort of um, provide services that we really have had over and over and over again in the city of the city. So I think, um, you know, we're still building an audience there, but I think that it's um, so far so good that it's been really, really well received and I think it's going to go. I would say it's going very well. I think all of those classes are built except for the final one, and we've got a ways to go for um, that will probably be able to take a break as well. Um, they have led uh, as a recap of that um, to the week of one of the handful of those members and to um, have the event for that and the great people. Um, Brady Jones, who used to be at the Cracker House, she was Cracker House Bell with us to do the coordination and she helped us last year as well. So it's kind of become more of an aunt and handle by herself. So it's really helpful to have um, Brady be at that. The um, all the exhibitions are good for every week, and then as you guys know, there was um, shovels running back and forth between here and the event. And Susie was our moderator down on the stage and did a fantastic job with all that really impressive music. Like that was just, it felt so festive. I don't know if it was just like the the people were just you know ready to party or what but then you just feel like I do it was just yeah. so incredibly festive. Uh, yeah it was great. It was really beautiful. Yeah. There were 40 moves um and so that is actually a lot more than we've had in the past. So it's mm -hmm. it's looking like I think this is going to grow over time. I think that uh, especially post COVID uh, and maybe just in our collective, you know, sort of ethos, it's it's become a better event in the city. Um, let's see.
the other thing that I don't know if um, Anne included here, but uh, the other thing I was particularly excited about is that um, we were able to get over 20 health staff there mm -hmm. to do boosters and flu and I got both. I got both. <laughs> I got both. My arms were just like, uh, yeah. Um, but that thing, I felt like a really great community kind of service that we were able to do. And I know a lot of people benefited from that. So, and you know, there were a lot of us that got shot. It's like, you know, it was just convenient. It was yeah. super convenient, you know? So it was, it was really good. And then, Joey Goose was there because he had been working with the board, um, and so that was really nice to have Joey around for the campaign and meeting. He was all excited, so you know, it's nice to have it's nice to have that kind of um, presence of support. Yeah. And so that was actually the Polly Baca award. The award, yes. So it was the Polly Baca Naisis. Got it. Um, yeah. Okay. So I sit on the Latino Advisory Council for uh, the Congressman. Yeah. Who was the worst? So she was in um, like a labor um, activist. Oh, 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 yeah. Uh, labor rights. Okay. Right, we'll that. And Polly Baca was uh, our, our former state. She was a state Past and she, she actually was kind of like a trail labor during mm -hmm. time. So we named the, the award after her. Mm -hmm. and it goes to the upcoming, um, you know, rising activists and advocates. Data that we have to provide. Um, they require really stringent um, sort of um, accounting, uh, auditing sort of measures in order to be able to count the pending. And we've not been able to do a lot. So we just um, worked with a company that does geofencing and counts unique cell phone numbers. And so we were actually able to get um, accounts from them. Um, and we, we know that there were 4.6 thousand people in the country. And then sort of um, added children and people who probably didn't um, have cell phones with them. And sort of correlating that with the accounts that we did. We estimate that there was at least a thousand people there at the event. So, well, it was actually event that happened in the meeting, but there was no group that came to the head station as well. So, that's good. That's a good topic. That's um, I think that our our largest attend attendance was the year before Sunday, and that's about the same. So, I think we'll get back up there for attendance, and I think it's going to go. For collections, Eric's been really busy doing the um, walking tours. So last month he did seven of those on Summer Lane Street and Third Avenue. Um, and then uh, uh, he's also been working on getting more about this, um, uh, the videos and the photos for the flight. So Eric, do you want to talk a little bit about that? It seems like the way that you are going to end up using that material. Yeah, so you can see on the walls here in this room. We just installed a new exhibit. This is about music and particularly diverse spaces in, in music. This was put together by an intern uh, assistant of Jared's, uh, Jared Thompson's. Um, so next fall, we try to change this about once a year. So next fall, we will uh, change this to photographs of the flood. And we may be able to include a few uh, small objects or other uh, other things that aren't just photographs. But uh, we put out a call on Facebook and have gotten um, over 300 photographs and videos 
um, sent in. And so uh, we're still trying to figure out exactly whether we're going to put those into the collection or whether um, uh, we'll, we'll kind of pick and choose. But um, uh, we've got a lot of video, photos. Um, uh, one person does have a, a camera that was buried in mud. That's kind of cool. You can see uh, the yeah, event in the flood. Um, so uh, we're, we're excited to be able to commemorate the 10th anniversary of the flood. And we may you know, also have an online component if we're able. Our new uh, collection software has a lot of capacity for online exhibits. So if we're able to get it fully up and running and, and get things uh, in good in time for that 10th anniversary, um, probably have an online component of the flood exhibit as well. And this last thing for you is about the collections um, that we've been talking about. So um, we'll be moving that forward soon for you guys to be able to adopt it once it gets to the final form. Um, our development place is at a really the great feature that we can see. Um, this point is their first neighborhood improvement project. I also feel like it's a um, um, uh, resources. So, in total, there were 34 hours of painting over four days of the Labor Day weekend. There were 53 painters, 19 brushes, two boxes of grill caps, 16 rollers of various sizes, 15 gallons of paint, and 11 colors, and 96 to 140 inches. <laughs> it was blazing hot. It was blazing hot, and people were out there having so much fun painting that um, it's on it's a basketball court. And this is the first of probably what's going to end up being several of these. Um, they, there's a lot of these they see that um, don't look great. Uh, and so being able to put these sort of brown murals on them really activates that space is a lot. Um, and there's a special kind of paint that they use uh, in order to do it uh, so that it's not slick. It's basically got, this is not exactly accurate, but it's basically got sand in it so that you know, there's no slip on it and things like that. But, um, but apparently it's you know, really thick paint in it. So um, Angela's doing some tests to see how well the colors um, uh, stay and then also if it needs to be uh, this is on the wall walls that she does, she always puts um, a review quote on top of it. And what that does is basically it creates a barrier so that if there is a review, she can just clean it off. If there's no barrier, then it damages the paint itself. But the problem with this is if you put the review quote on, does it eliminate the, the um, the benefit that you get from that sand, you know. So it's she's testing it out. She's got three patches that she's working with, so she can try to determine exactly how it's going to behave. So she's become a scientist on working on this stuff. So that's kind of fun too. Um, we've also got a finalized artist for the Cambridge um, Park Project, so that um, the contract is underway, and we can start announcing it that might be fast and and then she's got shop art artists that um, I think some, some of them have already started to work with. Um, they've been working with the Wall and Hell institutions to, in order to get those boxes packed and ready to go. So that project's going to be on the way. And visitor services, the um, gift shop is really just been doing wonderful, and um, I think it's going to continue to do really well. In, um, the team ordered a lot of stuff for Day of Dead, and we did so well that day at Elizabeth. I don't think we've been able to actually finish the pack. So um, she really, really did quite well in terms of the big shop that she took down from for Day of Dead. Um, and a lot of things sold out that day. I think she had three t shirts left, for instance. Um, I don't know if you guys heard down there, but people were asking left and right. We all wore our t shirts, you know, so we were kind of doing like month market. And people asked left and right, where can I get that? Where can I get that? So we're constantly sending people all over the group to buy t shirts. And so we did a great job selling t shirts. 
Um, and then August at $1,800 in September sales were up um, to $2,700 compared to last year at um, $1,600. So in staffing, which is always a, a challenge, even folks um, haven't had that same for the years, but um, she just, I think, has gone through a couple of more and so we'll be bringing into it more. Um, a few more people on board, so that's good. Visitation, um, she's seeing similar curves, um, but but just elevated um, from this year to last year. So, for instance, uh, this August we saw over 50 million people, so 800 people last year, and then in September, um, almost a thousand people versus um, 600 last year. So, I think we are sort of across the board seeing an uptick in attendance and in. Uh, program um, uh, participation and all of that. And we do have, she's got some numbers here that uh, the membership, so again, um, 54 this year because it's uh, 45 last year in August and in September, which is she the 23 last year. Uh, she let us know yesterday, the day before, let us know yesterday that we now are at our all time high. For memberships, and I think we're at 852. Oh, excuse me. 892. 892. So, August 9th, we're in the So, that's fantastic. That was great news for us. That's one of those barometers of how we do it. Um, Megan has been working on three to get them to the little house in the world. We got $2,500 from the foundation to hold it down to the day of the day. And $3,500 from the world down to the day of the day. And then we got a couple of weeks ago, we got a couple of weeks ago, we got a couple of weeks ago, we got a couple of weeks ago. We're working on sponsorships for the Hawaii and the agriculture exhibition. So we got a few weeks ago. Right in the middle, that's the beginning of the contemporary party. And then agriculture is the ability of people to buy from the The other thing that we have requested, and we'll see how this goes, is that um, the city of Longmont was part of the city and the district investors when we found the city and it was called the property that way. And as a result of it, when the, um, when the Broncos were sold just recently, the city ended up getting almost a million dollars as a result of that sale. Um, so we have put in a request to um, the city manager to, be, um, to use that money um, to help fund the children's gallery and all the expansion. So we'll see. Um, it's, it's on the list of several of the investments. So, We'll see if that's how far we get in that request, but I think that it would be a really wonderful thing for it to have happen because the stipulation on the money is for it to be used specifically for youth program activities, and this would be a part of the use of the dollars um, in perpetuity because it's like a one-time dollars, and so how do you make the best impact of those one-time dollars? Um, so that that's been, that was one of the ideas that was really um, this this investment would um, um, be it would it would benefit children for years to come. So in my mind, it would be really useful. Really useful. And then for marketing, the last entry there, um, we've got uh, we've got a lot of things um, for our kids that um, exhibit and for the event that um, um, Mark Miller Company is one of our longtime community partners, and we were able to you know found um, that. Down at the way the um, Spanish speaking radio station, and they really, you know, they are so excited and so animated and are able to really build on the um, activity and enthusiasm for it. So they want to just um, do that. And then we have a new brand, I'll show you that um, if you don't find it there, I'm pulling that up on the computer. Um, we can do that next. Uh, and then two keys to ten households will continue to promote that um, you know, through the end of the lottery budget and holiday um, visitation here in that town. Just a, how do I get this one? The 
agenda, but I'm excuse me. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. The only thing between is the report of the chair, and I don't have a report, so there you go. You're good to move on to the museum branding. All right. Um, Eric, I'll let you drive if you don't mind. Right. Um, so the and we talked a little bit about this that you can actually see the hyperlinks to add um, agency uh, pulls this together for us. So uh, go ahead and go to the next page. So this just sort of helps us understand why we're doing what we're doing. Um, but it's more than just a logo, but it's actually about identity players. And these are the sort of objectives that we um, gave to the ad agency when they were putting this together. Um, so bring the museum to alignment with the city brand and the cost of this specimen that has the ingredients of that pair. The our current brand actually has a sort of um, power block in it, so we can have a lot of data and feedback. You'll see what we came up with. Um, and then, uh, again, just thinking about the ways that we want to represent ourselves so we have art, culture, diversity, education, hands on access. We want to keep our architectural elements all that. Uh, make it appealing to a regional audience and beyond, not just within Walmart. But you know, not exclude them, not do better. Um, and then we collect the museum as a world class institution. Um, and you know, the challenge really is to keep a unique mark at the same time that it sort of references this city brand. So a lot of, you know, big, a big lift to ask them to do all of these things. Okay. So this is the um, current city of Vermont brand. And the only other um, entity within the city that has a separate mark is Next Play. And so everybody else in the city uses the, the city logo there. Um, and so uh, as we were developing the sub plan, um, trying to keep uh, uh, Next Play as the only other or equal entity being able to do this, this is sort of how they were able to do it. So you see the fonts um, are similar and um, that dark blue is similar, and then the dragon, um, that sort of awkward color to, to sort of make up its own special impact. So here is the design concept. So this is after much, much deliberation um, where it has all landed. Um, and so this is in front of the city manager. Um, for him to decide um, sort of how we want to proceed from here. Um, but really the keywords that they use when they're trying to develop this are welcoming, diverse, cultural, and trustworthy, and connection. And you know, we talked about things like should we use arts? Remember, we don't have that event. And what order should the words go in? And should we include science? And should we include performance? And, um, ultimately, there was a ton of consensus when we were looking at the ways that all of those things um, looked visually. Uh, so I can say that, um, you know, I have my own preconceived notion about what I wanted, and I changed my own thinking process, and I think everybody else did it too. And so this ended up being the one that um, had the most sort of, you know, grabbing cry around. And so it uses the colors of um, uh, uh, some of the colors from the city brand. It has that side of sort of aqua color from the, no, I think that's from the more slide in there. Oh, this is the one that's off my particular. This is the brown colors. Oh, this is, I think this is kind of fun to go see what they look like in different applications. And, yeah. Um, and the so this one you get to see the kind of um, uh, portfolio of the different brands, and I think they do really use the one of this. Yeah. So um, yeah, I'm I'm pleased with the result of this, and so um, we just need to see how the city manager is going to um, respond, and then we'll be. 
securities have brought us out. What we have in mind is that we'll do a, a what we're calling an awareness campaign. Um, and so really getting this in front of as many people as we possibly can and um, using it as an opportunity to just say to people like, well, where can you, you know, find your niche at the law office in that you know? um, so, so using it as a, as a good opportunity to be able to um, get in front of people who want to all right, great. Well, I like I like it. I like the way they all kind of flow together. Yeah, they really get together. It's really well done. Yeah. It's one of the things that we want to make this. If it if it gets okay, then we can. Still putting it on things. Yep, yep. We're hoping to have that um, approval and launch sometime uh, before the end of the year. Yeah. Yeah, we have a party. You used to have a party. Party for all the stuff, all the things on the grant on everything we need to get stuff. Yep. I think that would be, I mean, the timing is good too in terms of the uh, building expansion as well because it's stuff like this that we can try to do the pitch shop and the yeah. Yeah. I gotta tell you, I use their trade book. Nice. <laughs> okay. I was in there yesterday and they did this. Nice. That's what's up there. Yeah. It's really, you make the time, so. Yeah. 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 And there's some other things I have at home that I take the All right, so next on the agenda is the use of a land acknowledgement statement. Um, we had started to discuss this last time, uh, wanted to make sure that it wasn't just something that was being repeated by rote uh, and that it was something meaningful. I think there was a discussion around checking and seeing um, what would be the best use of the statement. Uh, and would it be in line with that best use if we were to use it at our meetings? So I don't know where that discussion went. That's about where we left it. That's my recollection. I mean, I remember back probably at least a year ago when we were uh, we charged with trying to develop a statement or we were doing a lot of the city entities that contributed to it. I think they took ours and massaged it and all of it. And I back to what Bree was saying, I remember our former mayor uh, saying that they didn't at least for council at that time. And I just was probably no better. But if I remember and I kind of agree with what he said in that case, is about this statement that you know some, there were some suggestions at that time that city council opened every meeting with this, if I remember. and I think his comment was basically, "We don't want to be into that." That's not what he said, but uh, you know, because then it would become meaningless if you just it would become so. Uh, what, what word to use here? So common or so trite every meeting that nobody's going to be listening to it. At least that's the impression I got from Mayor Bay at that time. Mm -hmm. And so um, we, I think, kind of took a similar um, sort of position. We didn't really vote on it or anything, but I think we discussed and thought, you know, that would work for us too, in a way, just do it once a year or a special meeting or something. I don't we don't have that like an annual meeting in this board, but some boards do. They have to have like uh well not law, but they have to have either a bylaws and annual meeting. And then there's a special meeting every year we can do it in January.
January, whenever we start them, we just be my thoughts and it doesn't mean it's correct thought, it's just a thought. But, uh, not to, not to uh, necessarily open every meeting with it because I do think it's going to become meaning, I don't want to say meaningless, but it just becomes so common that we wouldn't really think about it. I think our goal is, as a community, to have people think about something like this. Right. You know, having attended the, uh, it was just yesterday, actually, <laughs> the Native American uh, training, uh, there were a lot of, there was a lot of information there. Mm -hmm. uh, and almost too much for my brain to absorb anymore. And some of them I wanted to kind of block out because I didn't want to have to accept it. Right, right. But anyway. It's challenging. Yeah, it's very yeah. challenging. But um, that's just my thoughts. Maybe to make it really meaningful, you start each board year or something like that. I don't know. Design. But there's a lot of other board members that kind of take this too. <laughs> We have it as a lobby. Yeah, we have it as a lobby. Yeah, it's not a wall there, but there is, um, that was just like, you know, earlier, it's added, but um, I think there is some momentum to under the little more permanent or something. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Something, you know, uh, what could it call? I mean, another thing I was just thinking we could do is Joanne could put the statement at the bottom of our board agenda every month. Oh. Yeah, it's That's kind of a yeah. subtle way of reminding us of, of the, land, the land use. You know, I, I don't know. That's just my thoughts. Um, so maybe I'll just add one thing to the history here um, that. Really, the way that this developed is when we were working on the Long Island Fish and Pets Commission, and we wanted the commission to do what happened before 150 years ago. We had done much in the beginning, you know. Um, and so Eric started looking for the local um, Native American women who worked at the First Nations. Worked she worked at First Nations Development Institute and then she's moved on to another, okay. another place now. Right. So one of the things she had just a volumes of resources that helped us work on this. And yeah, one of the things that she said is um, I'm not gonna write this for you. This needs to be authentically you. And also there needs to be a Substance to the fact that's not beyond, you know, that and that the indigenous people need to understand. So you see that part of what's included in it is that we we make a commitment to educate communities about adults and our children to ensure that we do that to each other all the end. And so there is a there's there really is and, and we believe this, right? I mean we in fact I think that um, it was really nice to hear what Stephen was saying when she was attorney. That in fact, other people notice that we are actively doing this, and we will continue to actively do this. And I think that that was part of what Mayor Sassy was saying: is that we can't just have a statement; we have to have real action um, in order for this to have any meaning behind it. Um, and and I believe that we are doing. I, I, I genuinely believe that, and we will continue to do that. If you do that, is there any way that you could get some sort of development with the Cheyenne, Arapaho, and the indigenous tribes to have something, some form of art or something that indicates that somewhere? Um, well, there. 
is the other component of this, um, and part of the reason I think that Nick asked about this how such a strong reaction is that he was really pivotal in us developing the relationship that we have with the Northern Colorado Homes. And there's now a sister city relationship that is um, uh, superior um, between Guatemala and the Radical um, Winter Girl Association. And so that is really a historic moment because a uh, sister city relationship typically happens with other countries. Yeah. And so what this demonstrates is that Native parts of Native tribes are sovereign entities. They are like a nation. And so for some people it may seem like a sweet friendship, but it's way more than that. Um, and Mayor Gravel was really, really critical to that. And so um, the one year anniversary of the sister city relationship just passed. And um, we're planning on going to the reservation as we be part of the reservation to celebrate that. Um, and so I think there are a lot of opportunities that we have um, to develop that relationship more. Um, what I know from working with the tribes and the podcast and developers. Um, Fresh out grad school, that it's it is all about developing relationships. It's all about um, building trust and making sure that things are reciprocal and that it's you know, we we don't want um, there to be any appearance of it being one sided or you know, so being able to make sure that we're getting as much as we're receiving is a big part. So yes, and also we need to we need to ensure that we're getting as much as we can. Question: yeah. Do you have an internal policy in how you do statement? No, I know that it's in the lobby, but I wasn't sure. If you yeah, for our events, it's easy. Yeah. 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 I think that's really kind of what we're discussing here. Yes, it is terrific, and I would love to see more guys and, and more, more things broken down and presented. Well, you had a speaking of that, I, mean, I, I brought my grandchildren to the co-op mm -hmm. that you had mm -hmm. out in the uh, Acorn Foundation, out in the Oregon, mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't think they were really paying, they're young, I didn't think they were really paying much attention to what was being said, but they brought things up to me on the way home that they heard the chiefs talking and explaining. So I thought that was very good. I mean, uh, because, you know, that's our future is our kids, and, and that, they, that they actually heard and retained <laughs> uh, some information that they heard. Yeah, see, there we go. Thank you for that. Yeah, that made me think of it when I read this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think there, there's, there needs to be a balance, and, and yeah, I don't think that's the moment that is the right moment, but what, what's the thing that tips it to say this is when we do it? You know? I think annually probably somebody is reaching for our board. Um, I want to talk to Stephen more about it, I think, to find out how he feels about it. Um, we have a few new people to go I think it would be great to you know, get his input, you know, and have a discussion about what he thinks of uh, and how to, you know, how to present it and do it. This is very serious yeah. and um, unique. Uh, we don't uh, not see anything like that. You know, we don't talk about things. Um, I can only relate something to you that um, is very personal for me. Um, uh, my son lives in Germany, mm -hmm. and Germany and, uh, does a remembrance. Uh, continues to do special kind of global remembrance 
uh, for the Holocaust. And we were, my, uh, we were part this in a town in Germany, uh, Christian Sassen, in the Astrophysion, which is not in France. Um, and these are put into the ground, this, they're stone, they're uh, gold on a stone, indicating uh, the Jews' uh, family that live in either, uh, you know, wherever, you know, where they did in the town. Um, we did the first ceremony uh, that was ever done in this town uh, last year, and it was momentous. Uh, we had uh, my, my uh, I and uh, my daughter and my son's girlfriend and his mother, we baked 12 loaves of tall bread. We cut it up at night uh, for a ceremony and gave it out. Uh, there's about 100 people, 50 people who came out of all of this, but during the day, people came out. Uh, and this was again another ceremony that uh, this year also they did more families. So, and this is what Germany is doing in terms of uh, remembrance and honoring and keeping, you know, uh, so that it doesn't happen again in both that old. So that's what I'm thinking, you know, like how, what can we do to have these tribes, you know, what can we do here in the town to remember and, and, and um, educate? So that it doesn't happen. Yeah. that. And I, think, and I think that, you know, he should be involved in, in you know, in brainstorming. Oh, that's our American Commission. I'm sorry, I'm going to start. Um, yeah. So, what happened after the monthly analysis developed that state of Florida museum is um, that she also said, well, you know, the uh, city council of Denver has adopted this statement and this is, this is something we should consider. So I contacted a friend of mine who was in charge of that um, process in Denver, and he said to me, yes, that not only did they develop the statement, but they read it before every single council meeting, and every member of the council in Denver has to take it down to the end. And he said it, and he, he felt that that was absolutely appropriate. I don't, I mean, we were there. I don't think that our city council was that comfortable with it. Yeah, it was, it was a little frustrating to me, um, to be honest, um, because it was, well, I don't want to take the time to, well, we say the pledge. That's, I guess that's, that's the argument to me, like it becomes rope. I mean, yes. There's a certain thing, like rope can be negative, but I also, yeah. uh, I think, Yes, as a student, you eventually not take the Pledge of Allegiance seriously maybe every single day. Mm -hmm. But if you ask most Americans, can you say the Pledge of Allegiance? Mm -hmm. They can because it, is, it becomes a part of you. And I guess to me, this idea that we're going to make a commitment to face the injustices mm -hmm. by not talking about it and bringing it up one time a year, I don't I, 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 I don't know that that is facing so, it. So or to me, it felt like there needs to be more education. Mm -hmm. So that's something, you know, I would bring up when we have our retreats, but when we have our day together as a council, you know, I really, I really want to get some of that educational piece behind this. And I'll tell you, my kids say pledge, I have you know, five newcomers this year. They say it with such pride. They say it in Spanish and they say it in English. And, and it, because they have a sense of of appreciation for being in this country. They, all my students have had a lived experience and remember you know, where they were coming from, whether it be South America, Central America, Mexico. Um, and, um, you know, so they, it means something. Even though we say it every day, it, it's meaningful. And in fact, when we were online, you know, we kind of stopped doing the pledge because it was, you know, after the mom in WebEx. And then it was like, there's only a certain amount of time, like, you know, I feel like I have a window of really capturing their attention. 
And so I had to make, you know, most cabin kids just want to set their attention to God and say, like, okay, they're jumping on trampolines. And, yeah. So you know, <laughs> <the> I passed. <laughs> so, yeah. so we dropped it, and I had kids ask me, oh, how come we don't do the flood? You know, the little face in the thing. <laughs> so it was, it's interesting. Um, so, and I think because in their homes, they, there's been an education around it where, where say, the flood was something meaningful. So I think, as us as adults, that's why it's frustrating because it's easier to communicate for the kids. Um, is there is an education piece that has to happen to understand that yes, we'll say this every day, we take turns saying this every day, but then it also has meaning. And I think about people doing things, like sister city, right? Mm-hmm. Having the the connection with the um, the northern rifle. That's huge. And building that trust and. So I think we as a community, we are taking action to, to educate and to, to remember and to, to honor um, you know, the folks that have been, the people that have been here before us. And I just, yeah, I just felt like it was kind of, well, it just feels too deep. And, you know, so I, I feel like there needs to be more education. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you said um, yesterday, I don't know that we've been working with the doctors on the house and we need to know we don't need to be in the house because we just want to see it. And the training class, which is essentially just like in America, I guess, you know. Mm-hmm. And there were several people who attended that. Um, and and it, I think it's to me, it was good for I wanted to go to that. Yeah. And it was during the day. Yeah. I think. Yes. <laughs> Was that offered to all the city employees? I wasn't sure. I went to the afternoon one. I counted 35 people uh, in the afternoon one. I don't know how many attended the morning session. I thought it would be more highly attended, but Mm -hmm. I mean, and obviously I'm retired, so I can pick and choose the time of day I go to. I was looking at both. Well, I was just curious if it was offered to the whole of the city. Yeah. Or to see something like that at night. Yeah. Uh, and, and have um, or we break can. up or yeah. we can have yeah. to break up into you know, small groups. I think Freyabek would do it if they're doing it. Because I would, three hours was a lot of information without yes. breaking. Yes. Yes. Oh. I mean, it's just a lot to sit. Yeah. I mean, it, uh, my, as I said earlier, my brain can only absorb so many uh-huh. things. Yeah. But uh, I'm not, I don't know whether it needed to be two hours and no break, or three hours with a break somewhere, right. just to stand up, you know, for a few minutes. But it, it was very, uh, it was hard. It was lifting it there, it was very, it was hard to right. uh, listen to some of them. Council doesn't do this update every day. No, no, no. We, don't. we had a discussion on it. I thought we were going that way. Yeah. Although that was with the former mayor, so it was just a little bit more. Yeah, we we'll do our own thing. So we revisit this, right? Yeah. And then what do we see? So, uh, well, December sixth, we will be setting the date and putting the agenda items. So we'll have the discussion at city council on what um, what we want to add to our report. That is an all day. Uh, I, I'm not opposed to doing this at every meeting, but I just don't want it to become meaningless. You know, okay. just like you know, like saying, you know, just. All the media order, you know, and wrap and rattle this off. I mean, there has to be some sense of um, sincerity to it. Just so it's not a talking stick. <laughs> oh, no, we, you know, but each one of us can have the talking stick and say it and yeah. pass it around on a monthly basis. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I would say at my organization, we do our statement that we physically gather together. But we don't do it for like every meeting. 
I guess the question in my mind would be uh, what would be the thing that prompts it? You know, like, is it some type of frequency? Is it some particular conversation? Is it some you know, topic that triggers um, using it? It, it? it does get complicated. It's not every time. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I think about for our union, so Colorado Education Association and National Education Association. We do, so when we had our National Education Assembly, uh, Education Association Assembly in, and it was in Chicago this year, um, we actually had members of tribes that were in that Chicago area presented and just kind of gave a little history. Um, our president did read the statement. So it was a, kind of at the beginning of our uh, assembly. Right. And then, but when we had breakout sessions and we had other meetings and classes, it wasn't recited every meeting term, but it was at the open. So it was, it was the beginning of some kind of event or that's kind of what you say in that in that development. So it does look a little different as opposed to you know in an advisory board meeting. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think you know city council that is a that's an event. It's mm -hmm. and it's public and like I, I for me at city council I felt that was very appropriate. Um, for you know smaller you know, meetings, I, I, I just didn't know if it was necessary to do it. Um, I'm also very frustrated with the students as well, um, and certainly at least in my case. And then it is that I think for the people who are in the, the training, one of the things that is very, 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 like everybody is out of the community, even for them, so, you know, even as a therapist, we're going to be all the kind of study this um, you know, we have these types of conversations, so like, are we just doing this because everybody else is doing it already, you know, do we, we don't want to turn them off because we can do it, and all of that stuff is part of our conversation in the event, you know, so um, it's, it's not simple, and I don't think so that we do we approach it with the utmost of transparency and possibly be able to reach out to the other side of the thing. Um, so I feel that it was, you know, well informed um, about the statement. So I think it's just trying to understand that that was the process for the reason to read it. But if you wouldn't mind bringing it to that conversation, like, oh, yeah, that's the thing that you think yeah, that would interest you, because it would be nice to, it would be nice yeah. to, to have it be beyond just the meeting with just the counselor. Uh -huh. Because at this point, I don't, I don't think it is, you know. So, you know, understanding then how the city council would advise versus the library. Mm -hmm. or, Do you know what the library is doing? So the, the, this statement is the city of Longmont's statement. Mm -hmm. okay. So I don't have any idea how anybody else is using it. So I saw their minutes, their advisory board minutes are posted in the library and I saw oh, them all okay. along. And so I don't know if they recite it or so they I'm, I'm have on the board. Minutes. I'm on the liaison to the library as well. And yeah. it is not stated. Okay. It's just included in the, uh, on the notes. Okay. That's a start. Mm -hmm. So we start. have an <laughs> idea of what to do. Well, I would, I would love to have some of our members on the council. And that's, yeah, yeah. that's it. I mean, it really starts at the top. Right. So that's, you know, I do want to revisit that. So, I, you know, after the last 30 years, I've been in work around um, racial and social justice, um, mental health. So if you're listening to Movie Shop, you can 
One of these days, I'm going to get through. So it's just be patient and that perseverance and just keep plugging away at it every year. Mention it again, mention it again. Just waiting for my turn. <laughs> Well, we're all being pulled by to be heard. <laughs> <sighs> yes. Then you can say what you really want yeah, to say. Yeah, I don't have to be special about that. <laughs> <laughs> I think we decided that the meeting did not interfere with the holiday. Uh, but I think it's the week before. Yeah. After the president, they like crazy happy. <laughs> but that's the personal preference. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't, I'm having trouble hearing everyone through your mask. What do you prefer? What? I prefer Zoom for November. Thank Zoom? You. Zoom for November. So it's it's the week before Thanksgiving, the Wednesday, not the Wednesday, not the day before not the Thanksgiving, day before. a day and a week before. <laughs> What's the day? The 16th? Yeah. 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 All in favor of a Zoom meeting that week? In deference to holiday insanity? <laughs> yeah, I'm not a voting member, but... <laughs> okay. In person? So it's three to two. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think November's meeting will be via Zoom. If everyone is okay with that. Okay. And at that time, we will vote again on December's meeting. <laughs> Is that, is everyone in agreement with that? Continuing to make that decision month by month? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? Are, are there any other comments or um, board business? No? Is there a motion to adjourn? Thank you. Is there a second? Okay. All in favor? Okay, that is unanimous. It is 5.58. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate the time. Thank you. I have to run away. <laughs> <laughs>